Jagat is a science, Baba the industry lies We now are the young boy, we are the young boy, we are the young boy Mungi na ito kwa kudakwa shundu Asuku shukuru ya kaenda Haizu zino mabasa kuti Tiwane ya attachment Tukawana Nguwe kwana vya kwana Tapamba Zino to gare Vesa kamuru nguwe na tia nguwe tuosu Tumata kishoku Tungo wano uka ten cents Uka mkoka wana ka ten cents At least it is no fun The Nino is line of store Radza kwa pepe poli 2003 2006 Jita computer services. Taiwa na marino zimdev. Yaiti matsira paku supplementa education yedu in terms of accommodation, food. Ne kupadara zime mariza idio apakoli. Mwezwa Alice Chikumba. Mwanangu amita computer science yes naru attachment. Ah, pana charu ana. Sikuwe timaria chuo chuo tayi kutambua kuti. Pamoja na kuto kisa, kwa kuto kwa nilani kuto kisa. Mabata tisuan, dawa kungo kwanza kuto kisa, tuan ni zishandi so, siku shandi sa pamo pamo basi dawa tino ita, tuan o kungo bati ro kushom, isusi tika bati ro tino bati la natega, tu zatu kushui ro tida ita kwa sop da. Ili misdrangu wenzi kuta mguu, dawa kuweza. Muno mdo kara kwaza, kwenye mwana haripa university. Ya mwana wangu haripa ita tigrile vitna, kose mwana. Haripa kuti, wafu kuti dae matipa matu andres vente dola zima akomotishen. Mwana kani, siku fizi, zesu kati mwana yuma, mwana. Kuto zoro wane ya naishito nzgo, kusita ura nezu, kutu kikune enzi zimti. Chakambu yinzi kwa washitanga kute enda. First time ya kia, nifunga ya first kose ya kia. Hapana kaka mpoza nisi mtiwa. Akatu mbuti chaure ine shua aso pate wa. Una kutu mpasa kuenda, ufuna aprocha kutu unzo uti. Sinu papapu kusenda papu. Yendo sinu batra siya. Kama mpito wa nyanazo kwezi shumu noda. Kana shita kutu wa batire o kutu mwane ya ubuduri le gure. Nuya ni nga achi gina juwe ya batu. Kutu maria chwe nya sokuwa nila na yesu nilu ya kutu atashmini. Asi pa atashmini pa cha hapana cha aruku wani. Zimde vyanga iri Maria yewe apa, infekti yewe apa, apa gore, apa gore, gore, gore. Sa i Maria i supplementa i vile mafiz, chikaf, accommodation and stuff like that. Sa kapa gore pega pega, infekti tuwa zisoto fe supplement ya iti batsira za kanya ya trima students. Mungo za open yu masu zi, mkwenge wakati uomi ya iti stuff like that. Right, can I use Kwanza Kubatra Mastudin and Angari Pava? No, I'll be ready when I go to Katarika. Oh, you know, they love to battery. This was only my accommodation. Why can I need to go once up to the same day to battery and a marriage between an uncle's of one open car? Let to battery. Then you know, no, 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 Saga imari za hitu batila za kanyanya sana. Ni mremona uzu shandira. Nekuda kwe mari yo ya hitu batila ya zimti. Because I am running my own project. Ma computers, fixing laptops and stuff like that. Saga hala wae, that is na wana mari za hitu batila ya 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 School fees, accommodation, the Zengua that's an accommodation. I don't know, lodge somewhere. Saga Imari wouldn't have a one. I'm going to say, no, but the accommodation, two bazilla and even a bit. I think I'm going to go. I switch correct again that Kashka Pangue, my attachment. I should not be as aware of what TDC program. I'm going to go. Two times I'm going to go. Though I got to try, we are called the special scheme at Zimde. So ndoa not tambiri sawa. And then kamba ni edu, you know, the power foot ye bus. Saka we appreciate all that from the kamba and the government. They are supporting us. We really, we are really grateful for that. At the moment, I would like to give compliments to Zimdev. As an apprenticeship, we get a certain amount of allowances that we get from Zimdev. And also, I would like to compliment the company that I am training at. They are adding, uh, they are giving us on top of what we are getting from Zimdev. 
they are giving us some money which is quite helpful to us. So I think Zimdev, they should keep on uh, sponsoring apprentices because apprenticeship training is a four-year program. So one cannot uh, manage to last for four years without having any form of salary or wages. people out there who have both benefited and are very happy but some who have not benefited from Zimdef how does this work well, thank you very much Ruben Eko. or not work thank you very much Ruben um, what happens is the fund was created to um, assist in terms of human capital development for industry mm -hmm. hence the industry contributes to the fund 1% right. of their levy uh, so the people that are coming from the polytechnics uh, who do technical work in the industry and people that do the apprenticeship training, the artisans, which leads them to class one journeymen and so on, mm -hmm. are the ones that uh, are cutted for, by, for the, by the fund. Right. Yeah. The students that are coming from uh, higher education institutions, like the universities and teachers' colleges, do not benefit from the fund. Mm -hmm. So the people that are in polytechnics, when they go on industrial attachment, they are paid in allowance to assist them while they, right. th they are in, in industry. Yes. So why that segregation with tertiary institutions? Uh, it's not necessarily a segregation. When, Sounds like it. Yeah, but when mm -hmm. the fund was created, mm -hmm. it was created solely for that particular purpose. Hence, it serves that aspect. And so with the development and the growth of the number of tertiary institutions, whether they be colleges or polytechnics, surely the policy has to adapt so that it can accommodate everybody. Yeah. You will see it's only it's 1% levy mm -hmm. of the wage bill yes. for companies in the industry. Yes. And if you take the, pop, the whole population of our students in, in universities, the fund will not be uh, sufficient enough. Right. But so how do we curb that? Do you yeah. increase the levy or do you... I, increasing you know? the levy uh. will see us choking industry too sure. because, uh, you know, they, they... They'd be up in arms. Uh, yeah, sure. They're already struggling. Some of them are already complaining about sure. that. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Mm. So we, we must appreciate the contributions that they are making right. because they are at least helping. But you will see with the initiative, this initiative that we have put in, we have sort of now started to accommodate a, a certain critical uh, mass that we want to to, to train and mm -hmm. retain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you will see a, a, some policy shift in terms of how we are applying the fund to cover the gap of the skills that we need in the industry. So government is stepping in to cover that gap? Sure. From the haves and the have-nots? Sure. That's what we are uh, now trying to do. Uh, but you know, uh, the, this fund that we uh, have put in, you know, to assist, for instance, the STEM initiative, mm -hmm. it's just to kick start. But mm -hmm. we must come up with the long term uh, funding mechanisms mm -hmm. that will then allow us to increase the number and the sectors right. uh, of students that we must fund. All right. I think um, we can only analyze that, I guess, when we see it happening, sure. you know, because you'd never want a situation, as you heard, of people saying that they feel entitled. Like any young person, there are different opportunities afforded all of us. And if they can't afford to get into this type of institutions that get supported by Zimdef, sometimes it is not out of their will or by their own choice, you know. So it's almost as if they feel that you know they wish they could also be given the same opportunity yeah, basically so, uh, yeah. You, yeah you will see in every student mm. that will be enrolled uh, on apprenticeship as well as in polytechnics mm -hmm. they are cut which means those courses sure. are particularly designed sure. and they for are for that for no, 100 percent yeah. yeah so uh, uh, every student that will get into these programs that have that facility mm -hmm. definitely will get shouldn't assistance. all programs have that surely the when we talk of you know the lack of skills in our economy right now where a lot of students are graduating being book smart and knowing the theory of everything but not being able to apply themselves so the the, mm. the programs that we are going to create now mm -hmm. and we are already engaged even mm -hmm. with universities right to say 
we need them to also provide scholarships. Right. Every institution now will be mandated mm -hmm. to give at least an X amount of number of sure, students, sure. you know, to give them scholarships to sure. be able, you know, to sure. take up their courses. We are really cognizant of the fact that most of our students uh, have challenges mm -hmm. in terms of their fees mm -hmm. as well as the, the material they mm -hmm. use in mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. So it's a priority that we are looking at. We are giving it much priority sure. and we want to look into that and try to assist in as much as we can. Zimche is Zimbabwe Council for Higher Education and in a nutshell I could say there are three key functions of Zimche. One is it plays an advisory role to the Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education Science and Development. It coordinates all higher education institutions in Zimbabwe. It also deals with the quality of all the programs that are offered by all these institutions in Zimbabwe. There are a number of things that we do. Let me point out that we have got uh, two directorates which, uh, that are very active in that. Um, we have um, the Directorate of um, Registration and Accreditation. So this Directorate um, is the Directorate that uh, receives all applications from all universities uh, that want to um, offer higher education in this country. And they inspect the facilities, they inspect the curricula that they are going to offer, they inspect the qualifications of the staff, they do physical checkups and they advise appropriately whether the courses that are being offered, the content, the delivery method, the assessment does measure up to the standards of, of Zimbabwe. So that's one. Then we have the academic and institutions audits and these, uh, this directorate um, does carry out a number of visits to universities to check on quality. We have linkages with Namako. In fact, in our meeting that we held in um, in Nyanga on standards accumulation uh, on standards formulation, we invited members of Namako. Uh, they give us uh, input on how universities can incorporate um, industrial uh, content in uh, in their curriculum. For example, uh, you know that every university will designate one year for attachment, and that attachment is industry related. So Namako from time to time does advise us on uh, what is uh, current in industry, the sort of a graduate that we should produce. But uh, our, our role is to advise the ministry and the universities on the sort of uh, needs, demands that come from Namako. Namako does not deal directly with the universities. So we have that uh, relationship. In fact, we have a, we have a workshop that is planned um, for um, May, which we are calling um, Higher Education Institutions and Industry Linkages. And that is going to provide a platform to directly link uh, Namako with the universities so that there can be a one-on-one -on -one, um, discussion on the sort of content that Namako things is more useful for students to practice in their industries. I think what is happening now with STEM is, is a good thing because we're giving it um, prominence, we're privileging it. Um, things have been happening without a central coordination. There were people that were doing engineering, medicine, mathematics and stuff like that at their own volition. The national focus, the national motivation is what is coming in now to make sure that they are funded, to make sure that they are recognized, to assure them that there is a place for them in the economy. That's what is happening at the moment. So uh, from the way I see, I see more organization, I see more transparency, I see more order, and I, when those three are in place, um, I can assure you that um, the impact will be greater. And the motivation, particularly in high school, will be greater, because now people know that if they take those subjects, number one, they could be supported by the government, number two, there are universities that are waiting to take them home, uh, to enroll them, the, number three, um, that at the end of the day, the development of the economy does require people who do have those set of skills.
Welcome back to My Future. I'm Ruvenico and we are about to wrap up our episode this evening. I have in studio the CEO of ZimDef, Mr. Frederick Mandijidza. Now I understand in 2014, um, ZimDef released about $22.9 million dollars. Um, toward tertiary institutions and assisting with, um, you know, procurement of training equipment as well as grants for industrial attachment and apprenticeship. How did that go by your definition? Was that successful and will it happen again? It was successful um, without any doubt mm -hmm. because we managed to deploy those resources to our institutions of higher learning, to our universities, to our research institutions. And, and that, by its own nature, sustained the activities which they carried out. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in 2015, we deployed um, upward of um, six million towards uh, research and development, mm -hmm. which means these institutions were funded. And if you look at um, polytechnics, um, they do training in the different trades and the different programs, we resource them as far as um, training consumables are, are concerned. Mm -hmm. So without that aspect, it, it would mean that um, the process of uh, training and development within our tertiary education would grind to a halt. Mm -hmm. So ZIMDEF continues to play a very critical role in terms of availing resources which are required in all the institutions of our tertiary education. Sure in universities and um, in, in our polytechnics, as well as uh, teacher uh, training colleges. I was going to ask about that, you know, that with yeah. that, uh, you know, we've learned that the gaps in a lot of this is the training of the actual teachers to be able to execute all of this. That's one thing, funding uh, and developing equipment and buying, you know, all of that. But what happens to the actual teachers that are teaching? Because there's this belief that some of the teachers that have been there for years need to continue in terms of training to keep up to speed and up to date with the technologies and developments in the world today. Yeah, I, I, although I might not be able to really respond to that mm. aspect on the actual training that, mm -hmm. that happens, but clearly then there's need to, to continuously develop our teachers mm -hmm. and to capacitate them mm -hmm. for uh, 21st century training mm -hmm. because there are new skills which are required which skills can only be imparted through mm -hmm. our teachers right now teachers must be able to appreciate the dynamics of our environment and the dynamics of the future mm -hmm. where we are headed to for them to be able to prepare the youngsters for that future mm -hmm. i might just cite a simple example that um, um everything is going to be located within the cloud mm -hmm. through cloud computing Correct. and therefore our teachers and everything we have to do with uh, the education system must be prepared to to develop right. uh, future citizens right. Right. who are technologically savvy mm -hmm. and who understand how uh, the computer system operates mm -hmm. um, to be able to survive. Right. And then another aspect is um, how ZimDev contributes toward employers um, when it comes to the cost of employment of their staff. In some areas, there's a payment base of about 1% of uh, total wage bill, inclusive of allowances, bonuses, benefits, employer, NASA, medical aid, NEC, and pension contributions. Tell us a little bit more about this. I'm... Like I've already indicated, <clears throat> this fund was established uh, in terms of the act which you have uh, mentioned for purposes of mobilizing mm -hmm. uh, resources. Right. And the resources are in the form of 1% training levy. Mm -hmm. This 1% is 1% of the uh, monthly wage bill mm -hmm. of every registered company. In other words, every registered company is obliged by law to contribute 1% of their wage bill mm -hmm. to ZIMDEF which is then deployed for human capital development. Right. Yeah. So that's where basically, in essence, you get most of your money from. Absolutely. Is that Absolutely. where you get all of it from or something? Yes. Of it? No. We get it, all of it from the 1% training level. If I might be frank with you, mm -hmm. this fund is a fund which is sustained by industry. Mm -hmm. What it means is that if industry is Collapses. Aiding, yeah. it means the fund will also collapse. So right now? We depend wholly mm -hmm. on the contributions mm -hmm. from um, industry. Right. They are 1% training level. Right. We don't have any other sources of funding. So we are custodians 
of um, the resources that industry has pulled yeah. together mm -hmm. into a fund. Mm -hmm. In other words, I might, I might need probably to explain further mm -hmm. so that you would appreciate. Mm -hmm. We are talking about the human capital development matrix mm -hmm. of, the, of the country, which is designed in, in three pillars. Mm -hmm. And these three pillars are the Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development, the National Manpower Advisory Council, and ZIMDEF. Mm -hmm. Now, ZIMDEF collects the 1% training levy and deploys it to the ministry as well as to the National Manpower Advisory Council. Right. The National Manpower Advisory Council is constituted of councillors who are seconded by industry, each one of them representing uh, the respective industry sectors, mm -hmm. so that they identify the skills gaps in industry and identify what needs to be funded, mm -hmm. looking at the products that are coming from our institutions of violin, mm -hmm. and then they advise, their role is then to advise the ministry, the Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, mm -hmm. Science and Technology Development mm -hmm. through the minister, mm -hmm. to say in this particular sector, for example, in the mining sector, they might say, um, there is a transition of the mining environment where the kind of engineer we want today is no longer the one we have who is purely digital mm -hmm. by nature, but we want some, some who is purely um, uh, um, uh, undigital. Mm -hmm. But we want someone who is digital, mm -hmm. who understands the dynamics of, computer, mm -hmm. or co of computers in application uh, to, to the mining sector. Right. And then the ministry recrafts and reviews their curricula and factors those concerns mm -hmm. so that they can then be able to, to address those shortcomings. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I'm, and I'm glad you used the example of the mining sector because, you know, in the instance where we've got so many industries collapsing, so many businesses downscaling, and $15 billion potentially in arrears, what does that mean for the ZIMDEF fund, this 1% that's supposed to be coming in? What, how, how has that hit you? I think that is not uh, affected us directly because we are looking at the one percent training left mm -hmm. only. Mm -hmm. It might only affect us in the in the sense that um, if we don't have um, a sustainable employment within that area, so that then we can be able to uh, assess how much has been earned and is supposed to be earned. That's well, that's exactly my question. The, that those yeah, are the areas that we are we know we're suffering accountability as well as the size of institutions and organizations now. All those numbers have changed. So it's bound to affect your numbers. That even if you said, you know, from 2007 to 2014, our numbers have been on a decline by 2% every year or something like that. That would be something I can try and understand. So that's really where my question is. That as the state of Zimbabwe is today, how has that affected a fund that is so critical to the development of our country? Yeah, but clearly uh, from this point we can't, we can't really say how is it affected us because we, we are not privy to the developments that have taken place in that, in that sector. But all I am saying is that if, Across all if, sectors, if it has if it <laughs> affected yes. employment capacity uh -huh. by, by companies, then it is, it is to the extent that they would have contributed to, to ZIMDEF, that 1% training left, then we are affected. To that extent. So you're saying you're honestly unaffected with I'm what's not, around I'm not, I didn't say we're not affected. Mm. I'm saying we can't really say to what extent we, uh, have we been affected How so? at the moment. How so? Because, because, because we have not been into the dynamics of uh, the 15 billion which has uh, gone missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we are not into that. All we are saying is that if that, is, that amount of money has gone missing and it has limited employment capacity, then we have been affected to the extent that they would have contributed their one percent training life. Therefore, you have been affected. Yes, to that extent. Right. Yeah, but we can't say by how much, because we don't know how much. I guess that's one of the biggest <laughs> problems we have in Zimbabwe. We never know how much. We never know how bad. We never know how serious. But we know it's really serious. Um, so this is what we're dealing with. But look, I think for this evening, we're going to have to wrap up there. I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Mr. <laughs> Frederick Mandijuiz, our CEO of ZimDef, explaining to us how ZimDef operates, of course, and its contribution to the STEM campaign. All right, that's it from me. I'm Ravine Eko. We'll be back again with My Future next week. Same time, same place. Good night for now. Be good. And if you can't be good, be safe.
Yeah, yeah. Uti, uti, uti,